Coach Campbell said you guys usually talk just about every week or so. Yeah. What do you guys usually talk about? Yeah, I mean, I, I'm just uh, I'm here to support him in any way that I can. Um, he brought me back last April and embraced me about as um, about as good as anybody possibly could um, from a coach and a coaching staff that I didn't know any of them. I never met him. I never coached against him. Uh, but obviously, we we uh, spent some pretty good years here at Ohio State. And uh, I just got real deep respect for him, and I really appreciated him doing that. So uh, anyway, in an advisory capacity, um, when we started, it was winless. Uh, facilities in, in uh, the state of Iowa, they were better in some of the high schools and many of the high schools than they were here at Iowa State. So I know what it takes to start from scratch. And obviously, as you guys know better than I do now, it, it, you don't have to worry about facilities now. Um, it's an unbelievable setting. But anything I can do to help him, I'm here to do that. Um, I love this place. and and really honored to be back this weekend to see a lot of former players and a lot of people I care about. Do you have faith that Matt can, I guess, move this in the right direction, get yeah. it back, Oh, yeah. It up? I mean, it, it, I'm not fooled. I've been 45 years in Division One football. You know, 41 as a coach and, 40, and four years as a player, so I'm not really fooled by people, and I'm not easily impressed. But um, I, I saw it firsthand, the job he's doing of leading and, and cultivating and building relationships and trying to bring out the best and people and um, but obviously they don't have the start that they wanted. Who wants to be 0-3? Nobody does. It's, it's not a good feeling, but hopefully we can bring my, my family's coming in. We're coming in from California, Oregon, Texas, Florida, Georgia, Minnesota. Uh, hopefully we can bring some good vibes and a, and a good win for the Cyclones this weekend. What are you doing in retirement? I'm just <clears throat> hanging out. Yeah, I'm not ready. Really, yeah, you know, I'm, just, I'm still trying to figure that out. I don't, I don't, I don't you know, I, don't, I, I really don't even know if I'm going to retire. I don't know, yeah. you know, I'm not coaching now. Or uh, it's, I'm shocked at how busy I can stay without coaching because you just go those 15, 16, 17, 18 hour days that everybody hears about. But it's real, it's true. And then you're away from that. It's like, what the hell do you do with all your time? But uh, we're staying real busy, and uh, I, I got to go out and spend some time with Chris Ash for a week at Rutgers, spent some time in Iowa City. That was great. Uh, I'm going to go up to South Dakota State and spend some time with their basketball staff. You guys know the head coach up there. And I'm going to go back to Iowa for the Iowa-Wisconsin game. A uh, bunch of guys that I coach, defensive linemen, or want to get together because I've never had a chance to do that since I left after the 89 season. So it's really nice to have the time to be able to do that. And then this weekend is extremely meaningful to come back here. Could you see yourself coaching again? I don't know. I'm, I don't know. I'm just trying to figure that out. You know, honestly, I mean, I'm not trying to avoid the question. I'm just trying to figure that out. Am I going to coach? Am I going to – I had some chances to coach. I had a couple of calls about administration. And I just didn't want to do anything right after um, this last deal. So, um, But I've been in six places in 45 years. I've been really lucky. I've been blessed. Um, four of them were complete messes. Iowa, Wisconsin, Iowa State, North Texas, about as bad as it gets when we started in all those places. We did something real special in all of them, and uh, it was a lot of fun. And the time we spent down in South Florida and Florida was incredible. So it's been a lot of fun, and I'm just trying to figure that out, honestly, just whether I want to. Uh, I think I still got something real positive to give, but what direction and where do you go and where do you take that energy and that experience? What do you do with it? You know? Are you ready to kick <clears throat> you out? Or? Oh, geez, yeah, we're real tired of each other. Yeah, real tired. <laughs> That's for sure. That's for sure. Is she here? Yeah. She's here. Oh, yeah, yeah, we just got in a little bit ago. Yeah, just got in. Yeah, everybody's coming. The whole posse's yeah. coming. So the only ones that can't make it are mom and dad and my brother. My brother passed a year yeah. ago and mom and dad in recent years, and but they'll be watching. They'll be watching with a big smile. They, they spent a lot of great times over here in Ames. Are you surprised that you've been able to? And obviously, you're going to go to different places when when you got out of coaching. But have you been kind of surprised at the response and the number of people that have brought you into the different programs? Yeah, you, you know, I mean, you, do, you don't sit around counting up friendships and do does this, does this, do these people trust me? Do they respect me? Do they can I help them? You don't think about that stuff. And all of a sudden, you get these calls and. I've stayed in touch with a lot of people that I didn't go to their campus, you know, and stayed in touch with a lot of coaches. And it just really uh, brings the light. I mean, um, so lucky and been around so many people. I mean, you look at the career I've been around the people, Hall of Fame coaches, Hall of Fame players, Hall of Fame administrators, um, Hall of Fame media. I mean, just really the, the where I've been and the places I've been, it's, it's, it's amazing. So, uh, but to come back here this weekend and have a reunion with so many players and people and, and we did some amazing things, some magical things when we were here, and it sure as hell wasn't easy. It was hard, and I've been gone 10 years now, and, and I was told a number of times uh, there's been one winning season the 10 years I've been gone. This is a hard job. It's a tough place, um, and uh, but I'm, it, I think it, it, it just it makes even more evident, and I'm so more proud of what we did while we were here. We, us, the players, the coaches, all of us together, because 
I get my name on it, and this is so incredible to be in the Hall of Fame. This is about what a whole bunch of people did, and I'm the first one to say that, and it's not some phony, uh, make it sound good to the public. That's the truth. I know how many people uh, contributed to what we did when we were here, and it was damn tough, and it was hard, but we, we did some pretty amazing things. This is likely Snides' last year. I know we've said that every year for yeah. the last hundred years. Yeah. What's he meant? to not only the college football, but the college football in the Midwest, the Kansas, Kansas State, the yeah. United States, and I mean, what he did. The power of hope, Randy. How about that? I mean, the power of hope in any walk of life, and, and all of us in our personal lives, our professional lives, it, it's real strong. It's, it, it can, it's, it's amazing how, how much, it, and who would have thought, and we were all sitting in that same meeting room over there when Bill told us he's going to go to Kansas State, and we all looked at him like he had three heads. Who are you kidding? <laughs> I mean, if somebody said, oh, yeah, that's a great – Bullshit. There was nobody that said that mm -hmm. except Bill Snyder. But look what he's done and this, the way he has sustained it and the way he's done it. You know what, he's, what Bill is, is? He's just, we were together for almost a decade as assistants. And he is a great representative and a great ambassador and a great example and a great mentor for anyone that ever wants to get into the coaching profession. So I know he wrote a book, I think. Um, he could write two or three or four more on professionalism and how to build it and how to do it the right way and how to sustain it. And um, I was just so lucky because we were all a bunch of damn young assistants sitting in the same meeting room and nobody knew who the hell any of us were except our families and friends. Um, but, but incredible, just amazing what he's done. And, and whenever, he, whenever he rides off in that final sunset, um, college football is going to really miss one of the all-time greats. He's done it in the Midwest. You know, yeah. He did it at Kansas State where yeah. you know, it's yeah. impossible. But I know the big... The big eight, the big twelve, were different way back then. I mean, when you were, yeah, you he's know, he's done it and he's yeah. sustained it. And one one of the real sad days was when he got out, yeah. and one of the real great days was when he got back in. And, and just look what's happened since he got back into Kansas State. So, what does it mean for you're here this week and next week, and Troy will be honored. Troy Davis will be honored for his, and especially for the reason. Yeah, TD and, and Darren, they're both coming in. They'll be here this weekend, and they're being honored next weekend. But I'm gonna honor the hell out of them all. They're here this weekend, so don't 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 doubt that for a second. Um, you know, 100 years go by, nobody ever did what Troy did. Um, now another, what, t 20 years, how, it was a senior year, 90, 96, okay, it's 2016, so 20 more years go by. Nobody's ever done it. 2,000 yards, two years in a row. And then did it against top 10 teams and national champion Nebraska, top 10 defenses. Go back and look at the defenses he did it against over and over and over. It, it, it's just, it, it, it's, it, what he accomplished, it, it's hard to even put into words, really. I mean, it really is. And he did it every week, and he didn't, it didn't matter. You couldn't outwork, you couldn't ask him for too much. You couldn't say, hey, hey Troy, you got to do this. I don't care about it. I'm going to do that. Um, we're getting ready to play Northern Iowa, and they had beaten Iowa State before I got here and sang the fight song right out here in the end zone at Jack Trice Stadium. Showed that to the team a few times, and then I told Steve Loney, who's with the Dallas Cowboys now, get him the damn rock. I don't care how many times we give it to him. Just get it to him. We're going to wear him out. I want to wear him out with Troy Davis and a defense that will swarm, and we'll win this game. I didn't know until the next day Tom Crochelle comes into the locker room. I said, how many carries do you get? He goes, 52. I go, what? He said, 52. <laughs> So we come out of the next day on Sunday, and back then we had worked out on Sunday mornings, and Matt McGettigan, my strength coach, was with me all 12 years now at Air Force. He'd been in bowl games every year out there. He's got him running. Guess who wins every wind sprint after 52 carries? Troy Davis, every one of them. And then Double D comes in and goes 1,000, 1,000, 1,000. So try and find something better than that as far as crushing the ball in America against a lot of good teams from the same living room, same family, 7,000 yards from the same family, and uh, they're going to both be here this weekend and next weekend. But but um, I, I was just so lucky to coach both of them, recruit one of them, but, but uh, it, to be around both of them was pretty cool stuff.